We're gonna be talking to Debbie today. Welcome to my channel. Um, this is my first interview with an actual person about their lives. And so I invited Debbie to, to come and she agreed to. She's a very busy woman. So thank you so much, Debbie. You're welcome. Yeah. Um, so let's just jump right into it. Um, I know Debbie because we kind of live in the same area in the same town and um, we kind of knew a few people the same. And at one point, a few years ago, um, I was wanting to go listen to music and at night and Debbie was willing to go with me. And so we had some adventures there and that was very cool. And we both love music a lot. So that's partially how we know each other. And so Debbie, will you tell us a little bit about yourself? Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So mm, do you want to know how old I am? Sure. I'd love to. Uh, if you want to tell I us. have a, a 71st birthday coming up okay. in a few weeks. Um, and um, I grew up in, in the San Francisco Bay Area. Oh. Um, have been in this town where you, you and I both live for about 24 years. Mm -hmm. Raised my son here. Now he's older and moved away. And um, worked in several different careers, mm -hmm. had several different careers, and um, lead a very active life, mm -hmm. always active, too active sometimes, <laughs> and have many, many hobbies and interests, a, a great social life, yeah. and um, yeah, I think that's about yeah, it. Sums that's, it up. Yeah, that's partially what I thought was so attractive to me about inviting you to be interviewed, is you are so active, and you have a, she has a very active social life, and I thought, wow, this is something to aspire to, so um, I really, <laughs> I really am looking watch forward to finding out more. Watch what you wish for. <laughs> oh, okay, well, that's good. <laughs> um, so what was the last, um, you were retired, what was the last job that you had? Well, it was a really interesting job. Um, you can't really find it anywhere. It was really specific to this particular company. It was working for an insurance company, really one of the world's largest insurance companies, but in medical management. Mm -hmm. So I worked in the workers' comp division, mm -hmm. going out and training employers on um, how to deal with people with injuries, mm -hmm. on-the-job injuries. Interesting. Um, yeah, it was very interesting in helping them to get back to work mm -hmm. with some temporary disabilities. So that was my... First, that was my last job. Mm -hmm. Did you have any like um, thoughts as you were working about your aging and what was going to be happening as you age? I pretty much predicted um, and correctly that I would be, they'd find a way to get rid of me. Ah. Uh, and they had, that's kind of their MO. Okay. And to kind of get rid of the older people, bring in mm -hmm. the newer ones that are less experienced, they can pay them less. Ah. And, um, and in fact, that's, that's exactly what happened, mm -hmm. but it happened at a good time. And that's what I was really wishing for. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So I thought, mm, I'm only going to last here so long, but I really was there until I was 67. Uh -huh. yeah. So you didn't plan on retiring them, but um, it just unfolded and ultimately it worked for you. It did. I mean, I was really hoping that, um, they would lay me off. Um, I was dealing with, um, some family issues of helping, um, look after my father. Yep. The and sandwich generation. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Perfect example of that. And, um, that was kept me pretty busy for almost 10 years mm -hmm. and it was very stressful yep. as anybody can imagine. And yep. I was really hoping they would just do me a favor yes. and lay me off because I knew I would be getting a severance package, mm -hmm. which is what happened. It was really a blessing. And then um, rather than to look for another job, I just thought this is what I want. Mm -hmm. And, um, things were, well, no, they weren't easy enough with my father, but um, it just kind of took me into retirement. Mm -hmm. um, so I was laid off for 51 weeks and mm -hmm. then got wow. retired. Mm -hmm. But then I jumped in managing my father's business yes. and selling it. So. And so how, when you were like um, jumping into caring for your father and also his business, um, how did your life experiences prepare you for that? <sighs> well, actually... Um, I worked in long-term care for many years, okay. one of my my first career, mm -hmm. and um, so I had dealt with elderly people, and then my aunt, my grandmother, uh, then my father, so I had 
quite a bit of experience. So rather than to jump into it just cold like most yeah. people do, right? Most people, you know, like do. how do I deal with my parents yes. and an aging parent and caregivers mm -hmm. and all the medical issues? That part was easy. Right. It was just trying to logistically um, take care of those things and find time for them. That yeah. was really the, the biggest problem. And then he had dementia. So emotionally, uh -huh. there was that yeah. component as well. There's always an emotional component in anything in life. It's it's true. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Um, so when you were younger, because you had worked in that field earlier, um, did you have thoughts then on your own aging? Or were you just thinking, oh, that's so far in the distance, I won't be that way, I won't do that, whatever? Yeah, it's a really good question. Um, and yeah, I never really thought about it that much. I mean, um, there's a lot of longevity in my family, so mm -hmm. I was around very old relatives. So it seemed so far away. It did. My okay. aunt was 106 when she wow. passed away. Uh -huh. And my grandmother was 99. So there were, those people just kind of went on and on. Yeah. And, and I would ask them questions. Mm -hmm. um, and then that kind of, I think, helped me approach aging. Like I asked my grandmother once when she was about 96, maybe. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, how old do you think of yourself as? Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and I and I, I thought I just really want to know where her mind is. Yeah. At. And she said, I think I'm an 18 year old young girl. Interesting. Until I look in the mirror and then I realize I'm not. But um, yeah. yeah, it was. And so and now I feel that way. I think I'm like mm -hmm. in my teenage years. Yeah. But I know I'm not. I look in the mirror and it's yeah. like, oh no, you're not. You're not where anywhere That's close. That's so funny because I think in my last video before this one, I was mentioning how I. Do you want to get down? How I um, think of myself as in my twenties and thirties, but I catch a glimpse of myself like in a reflection like, of no. something, and I go, "Oh, guess no, again." I'm not. <laughs> exactly. It's so interesting. Reality. So, were there any surprises as you were getting older, and like say after menopause? Because I'm going to assume at your age you yeah. have been through menopause, yeah. and it is done, in, and you're there. Yeah, it's done, and I actually got through it really fast because I had some um, health issues, mm -hmm. and I ended up having a procedure that um, kind of speeded that along, gotcha. which was yeah. fine with me. Yeah. You know, it was like I had to hear my friends talk about, you know, the whole menopause thing and the mm -hmm. hot flashes. I'm like, I ah, don't have that. Yeah. Maybe, maybe I had two hot flashes. Uh -huh. That was it. So um, I think I was surprised at how busy I am. Uh -huh. I knew I would be busy because everybody mm -hmm. said, well, there'd be people that would say, oh, and these are the people that really didn't know me. Right. Oh, you're going to be retired. Oh, that's awful. You know, aren't you going to be bored? Aren't you yeah. worried? That's what I'm worried about with myself. Oh, yeah. you won't be. I, I said you don't know me. I think it depends on the person. I think a lot of people are. Like, if you don't have the community, the connection to, as you're doing it, as you're becoming retired. Yeah, and I think that that's a good point. And, and I'm very high in energy, yeah. so I'm always, I mean, from the time I get up in the morning to the time I go to bed, uh -huh. except when I'm watching a little TV at night, Yeah. Um, I'm pretty much going, going. Yeah. And, um, you know... I don't, don't slow down too much. I mean, I haven't slowed down too much since I was in my 40s. Mm -hmm. I remember reading until 3 in the morning sometimes, mm -hmm. going, okay, better turn the lights off. Time to go yeah. to work in the morning in a few hours. Yeah. And now I can I hit like 12, 1230, and I'm like, okay, yeah. I'm ready. But, um, oh. wow, there's my little <laughs> friend. Hi there. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think one, yeah, I was surprised at how busy I really am and that I developed a couple more interests uh -huh. that I didn't think about, you know, yeah. it just kind of happened. Yeah. And, um, and then, um, yeah, oh yeah, I really didn't think that I would have memory issues. <laughs> oh, yeah. not, not me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then I find myself not coming up with a word Ah. And that drives me mm -hmm. nuts. Does it make you nervous when it happens? It makes me feel old. Yeah. It's, and now, if I'm around a, a peer, you know, mm -hmm. a colleague, well, yeah. no, no more colleagues. Yeah. If I'm around somebody my own age, yeah. then we just laugh. Yeah. And they go, yeah, I do that too. Yeah. But if I'm around younger people, then it's embarrassing. Yeah. Because I think they're just thinking, oh, there's another old person that can't remember something. I mean, that's true. And yet, when you were young, it probably occasionally happened. I know in my case, and then. And then, so now when it sometimes happens to me, um, I'm like, oh, it's cool because really when I was younger, this sometimes also did happen. So I, I just wasn't like freaking out about it. Yeah. 
But yeah. I do know it, does, it is a reality of getting older. Yeah, and I find myself having to say, um, oh, um, yeah, yeah, I, I was trying to remember that because now I'm dating someone mm -hmm. younger. Uh -huh. And there's no way I want him, I didn't want him to see me as almost 71. And uh -huh. like, what was I thinking? Yeah. Yeah. You know, so, that's, yeah. That's so then you're very aware of your age too. And yeah. You're like, and, oh, this is my age. And then, yeah. yeah. And yeah. so then you're thinking younger or appearing younger is, is more important. More important or just, has value, yeah. <laughs> value to you yeah. in your mind, if nowhere else. Definitely. Yeah. Um, so you talk about you're very busy. Um, you know, you have a lot of activities. I know you do play uh, in like an acoustic group. How did, how did you get together with them? Yeah. So our mutual friend, Sandy, mm -hmm. um, uh, introduced me to this group that meets at <clears throat> Senior Center. Mm -hmm. So I usually have to precede Senior Center with <clears throat> uh, <laughs> so hard it. to think of me uh -huh. going to a Senior Center. Um, and um, it is an acoustic music group. And um, she was retired. So I just took off work one day and went with her. Yeah. And then when I retired and then after co I had to wait for COVID to be done with. Oh uh, yeah. Because then there was everything was shut down. That's then true. I started going and and it is twice a month and it's like the highlight of yeah. my month. Mm -hmm. And there's about 20 people and they we all bring mostly guitars. Yeah. I recently got an acoustic electric. Mm -hmm. I recently got an amp. Wow. And a microphone. That's so cool. And then I just sang in the mic for the first time. Awesome. On Congratulations. Monday. That's super cool. Ah, thank yeah. you. So yeah, I love that. Yay. I love that. And then I just I just started picking up the ukulele also. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I play the piano. So mm -hmm. do you like hanging out with your acoustic group outside of this group? Just uh, kind is of it like something you guys do other stuff together? Yeah. Or, uh -huh. Yeah. A few of us started bonding. Mm -hmm. And now I'm like very, very close with the woman who leads the group. Mm -hmm. Now we're really um, tight. Mm -hmm. And then um, a couple of the guys, I, I call the group all aging hippies. Yeah. Um, and a couple of the guys then get together with us and they're both married, but their wives don't, they're not into music and they don't like to go to concerts. Mm -hmm. So we go to really tiny, small and, and large concerts mm -hmm. sometimes. Yeah. And then we've gotten together to jam. Nice. And then, you know, my birthday party, my yeah. party. Um, she had a great party. A lot of people. It was outside. The group was playing. They're very impressive. They were good. You guys were really good. Really you were so. good. Oh, yeah. I was hiding in the back, mm -hmm. but now I have more confidence. Yeah. And so next time if that happens again, I'll be in the front. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. So, yeah, we've we've really gotten to be close. And we even have, like, a, a movie night. Mm -hmm. at, and we, well, once I get my, my family room yeah. remodeled, like I told you about, <laughs> yeah. uh, then I can have people over and can watch movies. We've been watching music videos. That's super cool. So, yeah, fun. Are there other groups you kind of belong to, or is that kind of your primary social group that you have? That's a primary one. And then Kathy, my friend who leads the other group, um, got me interested. She gave me her old ukulele. So mm -hmm. now occasionally I go to um, a ukulele jam. Oh, neat. And, um, and that's been fun. But it's just like a different vibe. Mm -hmm. So I don't see myself really getting into it that mm -hmm. much or developing friendships yeah. from that. Did you ever keep in touch with anyone you worked with previously or anyone like from your earlier life? Are, are yeah. any of them like your pals, your friends? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. That's one reason why I get so busy and why I have a list of people that I haven't called in a while okay. who, who live in different states. Yeah. Um, and tomorrow I'm actually going to... Um, an event, a, an opera event with uh, one of my colleagues mm -hmm. from my old company. That's great. And then um, she and one other friend, um, we get together, the three of us, and then we get together mm -hmm. separately. Mm -hmm. And they're out of all the people I work with, um, yeah, they're the, the ones I cared about the most. And then, and then people from other states that mm -hmm. I worked in. In my younger years, yeah, I still uh -huh. keep in touch with them. So I would say a lot of people do that. Some people lose connection. And yeah. so what have you found has helped you like keep in connection with these people? Is it that you reaching out? Have they just been reaching out? What? Is, how do you keep that connection with each other? Yeah, they're much better than I am okay. at reaching out. I, I find I pre, you know, kind of start every conversation on the phone with, I'm so sorry. Ah. I'm not, you know, keeping in touch as much. Yeah. So that's interesting. You're very busy. You're incredible. She's incredibly busy. Um, and you find that sometimes is 
you know, like something that surprised you, etc. It's good and bad. It's good, it's bad. Um, yeah. But you are keeping the like connection to people. And I think as we get older and older, that's crucial and kind of our mental and physical health. It really is. And just even when things go bad, having a support group. Yeah. Um, and so that's why I say you're an ass, you know, I aspire to a lot. Um, Careful. Because I would say <laughs> yes. But I'd rather have that connection. Yeah. Because I think that's really kind of a lot of what life is about. Well, I think even the studies, the studies have even yeah. proven really mm -hmm. that that people live longer when they have, aside from the health issue, mm -hmm. or physical health, um, yeah. when they have the social, the connections, yeah. even like e either grandchildren mm -hmm. or the neighborhood people or whatever, but the people that kind of stay in their homes and mm -hmm. um, don't have hobbies and don't reach out to people, mm -hmm. um, I think don't have um, as long a life, generally speaking. Yeah, so since you're very connected to people, how do you think someone who's not very connected, who has kind of lost the connection, do you have any ideas about how people could like build connections or oh, say yeah. they're at home hanging out with or without a spouse yeah. um, and feel very isolated? And, you know, there's so many factors involved in that. But do you have anything, uh, any ideas about how someone could build connections? Yeah, I mean, I think about when I was in my 30s and I was trying to, like, meet the perfect man. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I was busy then. I yeah. was involved in, like, three professional organizations and I had a ton of... Mm -hmm. a ton of a ton of friends uh -huh. um and um i i tried following some advice of you know some something i read um just like joining groups of, mm -hmm. of people that are like-minded yeah um you know i think is a is a really good idea um uh, I think I, I joined, uh, let's see, I would say if you had any musical interest, there's always mm -hmm. some kind of music uh, group or even going to house concerts, meetup groups. Mm -hmm. I think meetup group is a great place to meet people. Um, and, and most places do have senior centers. So yeah, although was, it makes you feel weird going for I was going to say that. And I have not gone for the first time yet, but I would like to be proactive yeah. and do that. So yeah. how do you feel going for the first time? I I highly endorse it because I think, you know, the reality is if you're a senior, you're a senior. And yeah. if, you, if you walk in the building and you see a lot of people that are walking in with walkers and mm -hmm. you don't use a walker and, yeah. and um, they don't look as young as you or whatever, they could very well be your age and then you know you have a lot in common right there. Mm -hmm. You grew up in the same era and they have um, travel groups. Yeah. Um, they have all kinds of exercise, yoga and mm -hmm. things like that. So, I mean, really the sky is the They limit. probably still do have bingo. They actually do. Because I would say that they was my do. idea that as I was younger, is my aunts were always going to go play bingo and eat lunch with Bingo is people. here to stay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I went, when I was a recreational therapist in long-term uh -huh. care, I have to say, I never, ever once led bingo. Uh -huh. I had my assistants do it, but yeah, yeah we had bingo. Um, so, but yeah, I mean, just... Um, just even walking around in the neighborhood, yeah. you meet people. Mm -hmm. And um, some people have to push themselves out of their comfort zone. Yeah. And that's just not their happy place. Mm -hmm. But if they have a goal of wanting to be mm -hmm. more social right. and active, you just kind of push yourself into that mode. And I think mm -hmm. um, there's just so many activities and events out there. Mm -hmm. I don't like going places by myself. Right. But if I didn't have as many friends... Yeah. I would do it. Yeah. I would just push myself to do yeah. it. And yeah. say hi to people as you're yeah. out there. Smile. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Which is hard because hard as we're me. younger, we don't want attention because then people are like uh, giving us unwanted attention. But yeah. at this stage, you know. Yeah. Well, yeah. And, and even though I'm an outgoing person, very extroverted, yeah. what's funny that people don't realize I'm also very introverted. Mm -hmm. I love my alone time. Yeah. I I don't always just go up to an initiate conversation or at a party. It's mm -hmm. hard for me. I have yeah. to make myself do yeah. it. People don't think that about you if you have a lot of friends that are real social. They yeah. just think you can just, it's easy. Yeah. But it's, it's not always easy. Awesome. Well, we've talked about a lot. So I'm, I'm wondering if there's anything you want to say out there um, as we're about to to end our our conversation. 
Hmm. I just say, you know, if I can, if I can be any kind of inspiration, that that was great. You know, that's great. And um, I think what I just said about pushing yourself out of your comfort zone to do things you might not normally do, or maybe it's just not part of who you are, but maybe it's who you want to be. You really design your your the rest of your life, and um, you don't have to. There's no um, there's no right or wrong way to to well i take that back there there can be wrong ways of approaching <laughs> aging i mean you know to sit around and be really sedentary is not necessarily <clears throat> excuse me a good thing unless you unless you have to and you're, yeah. you have no other choice true but um to just keep i think the mind and the body active mm. to me is really important i get mm. a lot of exercise yeah and people assume i like it yeah, that's what I assume that you like it. <laughs> I don't. You asked me that recently, and it's like, oh, you walk up the hills, you do this, you play pickleball. It's like she runs, she does all kinds of things. I oh hike. Yeah, I just ran two races recently, and wow. yeah, and, and I can't believe I didn't need CPR afterwards. But wow. but I mean, I do like pickleball. Yeah. But but I guess what I wanted to say is, no, I don't find just exercising in general uh -huh. fun. Okay. I like it when I'm done gotcha. and I can cross it off my okay. list. Okay. So yeah, get You're out, goal oriented. <laughs> yeah, get out there and do things. Yeah. And embrace life. I want to live as long as I can. Mm -hmm. I really do. Yeah. As long as I have quality of life, and quality, yeah. we can help ourselves have the yeah. quality of life because yeah. we have a little more control over that. All right. So thank you so much. I mean, I got a lot out of this. I hope that you guys did too. And um, thank you so much, Debbie. You're welcome. All right. And I hope to see you in the future. Bye. Bye.